President Trump, he signed an executive order to essentially halt the separation of families at the border. That is good news. But what happens to the more than 2,000 kids that have already been ripped from their parents? According to the New York Times, hundreds of those separated children are now coming to New York right here in waves. I want to bring in Anthony Enriquez. He's the director of the Unaccompanied Minors Program for the Catholic Charities Community Services. Anthony, I was on a plane yesterday, and there were a number of unaccompanied minors with a chaperone. Help me understand where do they go, and now that the zero tolerance policy is, is over, how do they get reconnected? I looked at these kids and I thought, how are they ever going to find their mothers again? Thank you, Stephanie, for the opportunity to uh, help explain what happens. When a child is encountered on the southern border, within 72 hours, if that child is unaccompanied or if that child's been rendered unaccompanied, been separated by their family, from their families by the government, they are then placed with a humanitarian shelter uh, here in the United States. There are about 100 of them uh, across 14 different states. And once they're at that shelter, lawyers from my team, lawyers from other nonprofit organizations around the country then visit these children in the shelters. We meet with them individually. We make sure that they're OK. We try and see, what is it that you need right now? What is your most pressing need? They're all telling us, where is my mom? Where is my dad? Can you help me find where they might be? For these children, what we're doing is we're working with the shelter system to track them down because there is no system. The federal government has no plan to reunite these children. They never bothered to make that plan. So what we're doing is connecting either with a parent who is in the home country who might be able to tell us Perhaps they received a call from the separated father who was arrested and sent to a federal marshal custody or sent to an immigration detention center. And piecing together those clues on a case-by-case -case basis to tell, to try and figure out where are these parents. We've been successful in some of these cases, and, and we will be successful, but it's going to take time. But Anthony, you're part of a nonprofit. If you don't have support and donations, this won't happen. I just want you to explain to me again, there is no government process put in place for these kids to reconnect with their parents? I don't understand. That's right. This, this plan, this zero tolerance policy, it, it was, happened from one day to the next. And in fact, separations had been occurring well before the zero tolerance policy. They just are now occurring on a massive scale. And so, as you said, we do need donations. We're a smaller staff, and, and we need more people to help, help us put these this pieces back together. But then when you go to these facilities that are run by the state, and they learn, okay, zero tolerance is over. Do those, do those state employees have any plans to get those kids back? What are their, what, where do they think those kids are going? Well, I should clarify in that it, the state maybe has these facilities, but the, the program itself, the Office of Refugee Resettlement, that's a federal program. And so really it's the federal government's burden to put together a plan. If they were the ones who wanted to rend, t tear our family asunder, they have to figure out how to put them back together. We have been able to work with many of these case managers, many of these child welfare specialists at the shelters to put these pieces back together, to find these clues, to track down, is there a parent in a home country? Did we get a call from a federal defender in San Diego that maybe could tell us where the, the father is being held in criminal custody? And working together as a team, we've been able to piece some of these families together. By and large, what's the profile of these kids? This narrative is out there that they are the children of drug smugglers and criminals. Who are they and what are they fleeing? It just simply isn't true. These children, and one of the most impressive things about them is notwithstanding the trauma, notwithstanding the fear, one of the questions they always ask is, is my mom okay? Is my dad okay? Can you tell me that, please? They care. They're a good person. They said, I don't understand why I saw my father in handcuffs. He's a good man. And all he told me was that we were running because something was, was trying to hurt us. Kids and, and families are running from gangs, from governments that can't control the gangs that, gangs, that won't control the gangs, from domestic violence, from situations where it's really a matter of life and death. That's the profile. These are children that, for the most part, are, are under 10 years old that we're talking about that have been separated. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.